Hello, it's time for us to focus on creative people in the art world. My name is Chioma Okwara. Welcome to Art and Leisure. Today's package is rich. Artists make strong statements with their works. Uche James Iroha, one of the leading contemporary photographers, has focused his lens on the power holding company of Nigeria. Let's see his solo exhibition. Now I have to add that immediately you stop seeing me. What you see next is deliberate. So stay tuned. Yes, it is an exhibition hall, but there is darkness everywhere. I had to plead with the organizers to allow my viewers to see what I'm talking about. Power and Powers is what Uche James Iroha titled the solo exhibition. He's not happy about what he calls epileptic power supply. This is my own complaint. It's not a fresh issue. I was going to suspect complacency in both leadership and the populace. So this is just to shake off that and to remind ourselves that we had a huge task ahead. For us to move into the nationhood designed for us, we need to install lights, start constant and steady power supply in this country. Uche studied visual arts at the University of Port Harcourt. He majored in sculpture but for 18 years, he's been in a tight embrace with the camera. He has his own way of interpreting reality. How I process thought is that I don't separate myself from my work. I don't, I'm not the kind of person that will say, um, what should I work on next time? And I start thinking of a concept. No, I am living in the concept. I am the concept. That I, that I try to get power into my house is already an inspiration. I can't say, okay, I'm thinking of stuff. I am that stuff. First of all, I'm an African, so if you see, most of the images are like the same posture of the African dolls, be them Baluba dolls of Congo or the Bambara mask of Mali, even the Beji dolls of the Yoruba land here we have. The posture is always flat, symmetrical, dead in your face, as confrontational as possible. That's the plan, first of all. We didn't want to mince words, we didn't want to be careful, we didn't want to be patronizing anything or anybody. We wanted to tell it as it is because the reality is quite stark. There's no, when Nepal strikes, I mean, there's no apology, there's no warning. It's a surprise, an ambush. This is one artist who has a knack for details. Black is his chosen color for this exhibition. In creating this exhibition, the artistic direction was clearly lack of light. Even if you pick up the catalog, there's nothing in the cover, it's just black. Everything is dark. When, when the light goes, that's how it is, you know? There's no color. It's the reality. My direction is trying to be as sincere as possible. We're not trying to create a beautiful exhibition. We're trying to be truthful, to be honest, and present our people with reality. Some of these photographs were shot in the studio, but others were shot in real situations. Try as much as you can to remind Uche that the supplier of electricity is the power holding company of Nigeria he just prefers the old name. Everybody calls it Nepal. You, you, I think you call it Nepal as well. That's what, it was the longest one. It was the most popular one. It's Nigeria Electricity Power Authority. That culminates the whole power distribution and new systems. Many are impressed with the concept. I think it's very, very, uh, how do I say, expressive. Very Nigerian. It portrays um, a lot of uh, the issues that we deal with, I think, on a daily basis. This exhibition is not just about highlighting a social ill. Creative minds also prefer solutions. Funds have been spent in the power sector. Why are the policies not working? The first thing is to see how we can implement some of these policies you know, that have been uh, instituted all this time. Why are they not working? Why are they not implemented? What are the reasons? Those are some of the issues, first of all, that we'll begin to address. You know, first of all, transparency, putting the right person in the right holes, because the truth about it is that we already know what is wrong with the power sector and why it's not functioning. It's a funny situation. It's something that we should also look at as individuals to push the nation, to push leadership. We love this country. I can't change my passport to any other passport. I love Nigeria, so I'm doing my bit. In 2005, Uche James Iroha won the African Photography Festival Award in Mali. In 2008, he won the Prince Claus Award. He has participated in 31 group exhibitions and done commissioned jobs. He's one of the leading contemporary photographers. 
He loves to document real life situations. Power and Powers is his fifth solo exhibition. Power and Powers by Uche James Iroha. Yes, everyone is familiar with what he talked about. I love his concept and his execution. I mean, exhibition halls usually have white walls, but Uche changed that rule. Yes, artists do think out of the box. Now, let's talk about a woman who studied law but has been in the business of art promotion for 10 years. The Lagos art community celebrated with her recently. There were more renditions and also a poetry performance. I signed up for this by being born and I will fulfill it. The joy and every talent that comes with spirit to the good for which I was meant. Mrs. Bolanle Austin Peters is a trained lawyer. She runs a unique institution where children can learn how to speak indigenous languages, where artists can exhibit their works, where people can eat local delicacies, and much more. I ask myself, what do I enjoy doing? The reality is that I enjoy history classes. That's the only thing that made me happy when I was in school, history and literature. Over the last 10 years, we've been able to a posthumous award was given to the banker, Mr. Tayo Adeniroku, a great art lover and supporter of art initiatives whilst alive. Thank you very much. Definitely my pleasure to be here tonight and um, I'm so grateful for this uh, kind remembrance of my late husband. Thank you very much. May he so rest in happiness. Other members of staff also received awards. The arts sector is for people who are gifted. We tend to support young artists and some others who are in the now, we've done this for several years and we've worked with several people, some of whom are around here at the Vita, and over time we've grown to enjoy and appreciate art more and more and more. Showcasing our rich culture brings joy to Mrs. Bolanle Austin Peters. For 10 years, she's kept at it. She's not only following her passion, but also contributing to the growth and development of the arts sector. Welcome back. The Lagos Black Heritage Festival is a yearly event which helps Lagosians unwind through its many activities. Already in its seventh edition, children are going to participate in a five-category competition. Of course, there will be mouth-watering prizes. Watch this. The Black Heritage Festival has been on for six years. It is a Lagos state government event that showcases different aspects of our rich culture. There's a book regatta. That takes place on a Sunday. There is uh, the beauty pageant as well. Uh, the last one was held here. There is uh, also the Lagos Carnival. And uh, we wish for, for uh, as many people to attend as possible. Let's make noise about this. Let's uh, bring people to the Black Heritage Festival Week, which will end with the uh, carnival on the 6th of April, 20. 50. Children are not left out of the week-long event. In 2012, a program was carved out for them. It was tagged the vision of the child. In 2012, we had vision of the child as the theme of the festival. We could only reach out to 72 schools in Lagos. 
there was improvement on the 2013 edition titled The Thousand and One Faces of Corruption. And um, I don't know how many of us were here for that exhibition. We are different sector of the Nigerian economy. We're represented on watercolor paper. It was very fantastic. In 2014, the thing was given out as literary art. All of them wrote on that team, either as poem, short story, or essay. They were submitted within a period of two months. We had participation from 620 schools. Those that participated last year shared their experiences. Very interesting, and it was nice. It was interesting. Just like that. Tell me more. Are you shy? It was fun and exciting, you know. I experienced many other things. Another art competition I've been going to. I used the Bacon Package Festival um, experience to know me about the world. I felt happy and also scared because I thought I wouldn't be able to meet to the needs I would be able to use to pass the competition. So, but when I passed through the first stage, I knew I would be able to win. Okay. How has your colleagues, your peers seen you like, at the start of your school now, Abby? And they yeah, have been like, they want to do, they want to do. But yeah, when they saw me, they were like, because I didn't have to do it, I was like, it was for that next day that when you come, you see how. It was nice and adventurous to me. And I was like excited when I heard that I was when I went on the um, I was like when I heard our second place. Two thousand five hundred schools in Lagos State we participate in the two thousand and fifteen edition of the Vision of the Child project. The theme for twenty fifteen will be the road to San Visa. The journey begins with a letter section, a poem, essay, a short story of fixed length on the chosen theme. Those who scale through this stage will then be invited to Freedom Park, Lagos side, and provided with brush, paint, and easel, and set to illustrate their literary presentations in the complementary medium of painting. As a further incentive, unlike 2014, where the prize is awarded on the aggregate of two creative media, there will be three prizes in all, one in painting, another in its sister art, the literary, while the prime prize will go to the combined pr product of the pupil's dexterity, painting, and literature. We are going to select 30 best writers, those that can as well speak well about the theme of this of 2015. They will do that category two. Category two are the kids that will excel both in writing, they can read, and they are also going to represent all, uh, their, their team on watercolor paper. As of today in the Secretariat, we have 96 paintings that will go to our Hall of Fame. There are two ways to register. One, the art copy, which is the form. Some schools don't go online. They are expected to give it to the interested pupils. They will fill it, write their short story, and submit at the Festival Secretariat. The second category, so many schools did this last year, the, the teacher or parent go online, register their, uh, their children, and of course submit their right of line. The selected entries will be screened, and each child will spend 10 minutes explaining his or her entry. During the screening exercise, no teacher, no parent will be allowed at all into the screening room. This project is a noble one, and many are in support of it. We cannot allow this dream to die. We need to move arts and culture to the next level. Their children today, they'll be the ones to run the affairs of this great nation many years to come. Every child comes and, and he comes bundled with skills. So this kind of project actually helps to elicit these skills and gives the child the confidence 
So we should stop all this lottery-like lifestyle that we are living and this rent economy that we are, we are going through. And we should start looking at things that will develop us. They are the assets of the future. Nigeria in 50 years, in 100 years, will be in the hands of these kids. The vision of the child project is for primary and secondary school students between the ages of 6 and 12. They'll be judged in different categories, namely poetry, prose, fiction, essay, and painting competitions. Six winners will go home with mouth-watering prizes. Registration opened on the 13th of November and will close on the 19th of December. Once again, the theme for the 2015 edition of the Vision of the Child is the road to San Bisa. Nice to have you back. Those are the future governors, senators, ministers, first ladies, and what have you. Raising them well is what we owe them. Now to our last report, it is no longer news that the Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization has a new director general. Sir Ferdinand Anikwe, the new DG of CBAC, has put his best foot forward. Let's give you an update of what he has done in the last two months. The Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization called a press conference to introduce its new Director General. Thereafter, the new DG visited the Oba of Lagos, Obariwana Kyolu, in his palace. What we are doing here has to do with our culture, with our tradition, with our customs. We are in the process of packaging and reintroducing those already packaged, and in the same manner, get the customs and traditions of some other people in the entire our people in diaspora and the entire African continent. Now you start from the owners of our traditional institutions. The Oba is the head of everything that is traditional in this place. And the Oba is the landlord, is the owner of this place. He represents whatever our tradition can present here in Lagos and we must take off from him. In addition to this, the respect to the elders is the most important cardinal point of our tradition. So it's very necessary that we go to the Oba for respect, for his blessing, and then for his pieces of advice. Embassies were also visited. Benin Republic was the management's first port of call. They are our neighbors, so to all intents and purposes, we, our people are there. The Yorubas of Nigeria and the Yorubas of Benin have the same origin. They trace their ancestral points of reference to Ileife. And in addition to that, we have collaborated with them in a number of ways. To the extent that our organization is a pan-African organization, it then, it's then our job to ensure that we connect those who have similar views in what we are doing. They also visited the American embassy. The population of the blacks in the United States of America shows that uh, a greater number of Nigerians who were taken over there during slave trade uh, are there. And uh, we need to uh, link up with them. Some of them have dis disjointed historical practices, have disjointed uh, cultural performances, we want to streamline this and firm their relationship with us, root it properly in our history, and be able to tell them the latest in terms of our uh, cultural performances. This center is trying to uh, increase our efforts in our Pan-African mandate by introducing a Pan-African magazine. And we've held meetings with uh, consultants on this matter and some professors. So sooner than later, we'll have a Pan-African magazine that will be covering all these and then focus a lot on the diaspora. The Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization has put together a three-day international cultural festival and colloquium. To showcase the expertise of Nigerians in cultural promotion and the cultural practice in cultural performances. <laughs> Let's
In two months of being the Director General of CIBAG, Mr. Ferdinand Anikwe has received two awards. Nigerian Institute of Public Relations considered me fit to be given an award, and of course, the Enugu State uh, Development Association in Lagos decided to give me, and they said it is as a result of my contributions. The only thing I say is that I will do more. I didn't know that the little I've done uh, would have merited some awards by now. But they said it's a historical item, uh, that is still, it was from my contributions from the time I was serving in various forms. I was in the local government as a chairman. I have been in the state, I rose to the position of permanent secretary, and uh, now I'm here. So I want to thank them for recognizing me, and I promise to be better than I can do now, by God's grace. The Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization has a Pan-African mandate. It was established in 1979 to be the custodian of artifacts and rare cultural items used for Festac 77. <music> Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our offering today. Please join us same time next week for another bumper package. You know, you can watch this episode and other episodes at a convenience. Just visit www.artandleisure.com.ng. Please, we encourage you to leave comments afterwards. <laughs> My name is Chioma Okwara. Love yourself. Love Nigeria. Thank you.